Welcome back to another episode of I Shit On Your Clips. If you want to submit anything, you can go to my Discord, go to the content review channel all the way on the top. Post a link there. I'm not gonna watch replay files because they are just an absolute bitch to work with. So I prefer it if you actually send me videos like you will see over here today. We have an F4C against two MiG-21s. The first one luckily breaks off and it's only one of them. Now it is a Russian one. We are at 10.0. Not sure what BR we are, 9.3, 9.7, SU-7, so perhaps it's a PFM, but this is not a fight that you really want to take. And the title says, had an idea, it didn't work. So let's take a look at what this guy does. He has the gun pot on, so he can at least defend himself somewhat. However, the FOC is of course not the greatest plane when it comes to actually dogfighting people. Right now you're turning into the terrain, probably trying to use it so he can overshoot or whatever. The issue is you're not looking at where the MiG-21 was at all. He's gonna pop up somewhere on your left, maybe even from above. You have no idea where he is right now because you are looking forward. You didn't have the room to go head on. This guy is already turning in onto you. And you have no idea where he is. So even though this is a fight that's not really winnable. He's gonna pop up from above. There he is. SMT. And now he's just too close. And you're probably going to get R60. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. We use the terrain again. It is smart. It's the only real thing that you can do. You want to be a little bit tighter here. You use the terrain. And because of this you can kind of make him maneuver without him actually getting a good solution on you. You're dodging his missiles this way. And eventually he will lose more speed than you. And you're actually kind of draining his balls. The issue is that you're just not looking at him at all. I'm surprised that this guy hasn't missiled you out of the air yet. Maybe it's late into the game. I'm not entirely sure. But you're not really getting any position. You're not really doing anything. So the main issue here is just the fact you're looking at him. Because he doesn't have missiles, you actually get away with this somewhat. Now you want to tighten this up. Okay, he does have missiles. I'm not entirely sure why he didn't shoot anything earlier. Because if he did have missiles, you would have died right here. However, I want to take a look at the bleeding of his speed. Because honestly... What you were doing wasn't completely terrible, at least in the sense of trying to position yourself to make him lose speed. You're making very wide loops around the mountain here, basically making it so that he can't turn much tighter either. Of course, he can go over the mountain and cut you off, but he didn't think of that either. He probably doesn't have the speed for that, so that's completely fine. The main issue is not right here, it's after you pass the basically the 360. So right now, you're turning flat and you're going up a little bit. If you weren't going up a little bit, you might actually be able to somewhat raid fight him. Now, I'm not going to say that it's a very winnable fight. That it's a great idea. But if you are doing this kind of maneuver and this bozo doesn't have missiles, which I initially thought he didn't because he wasn't shooting anything. So this is a trap I would find myself in, in as well because I thought he wouldn't have missiles. I can go a little bit slower and I can now start pulling into him. But by going vertical here and kind of straightening out you give this guy a lot of position now of course he has a missile now so you're gonna die regardless but you want to keep this loop a lot flatter like after you overshoot here instead of trying to go into a spiral try to keep your own speed and make sure that you can rate fight quote unquote a little bit faster to get behind him i'm not gonna say this is a supremely winnable fight and you completely threw it you did make some mistakes but in general this is the main one here, at least the one that I can take away from. Sure, be a little bit more aware, be a little bit more vigilant about your surroundings. Losing track of him was your biggest problem here. But once you get into this position, try to just stay flat, horizontal, and just keep pulling. If you notice that you are pulling away from someone, you can keep doing it. If you notice that he's gaining on you because he's already on your 6, just break off and fly away. Of course, it's an F4C and he has R60, so at the end of the day, you're still gonna eat shit. But that's the takeaway from this right here. Not sure why he didn't shoot the missile earlier. But hey, it makes for at least somewhat an interesting clip. Alright, we have another video here. We have a Heinkel, Heinkel. We have a H75A1. And we are gonna be climbing straight in. Good luck, have fun, I'm French. Very real, I understand your frustration. And you just wanna climb. You're gonna climb straight in. You're speeding this up because you probably think it isn't that important. It, this is some of the most important part of the entire game. And you are maneuvering a hell of a lot without much reasoning. And you are basically losing 5 to 1000 meters. 500 to 1000 meters. For basically no reason whatsoever. Because you keep bleeding your speed. 
for no apparent reason. And I saw you are level 35, so if your aim is bad or if you you make some mistakes, really no issue at all. Because being a level 75 in this game is pretty fucking rough, especially in Aero B. Because there's a lot of intricate details that a lot of you guys don't actually know. Now we have a H75. The H75 is pretty damn maneuverable. It doesn't climb the best, but it's a very solid plane for the BR. Now, what am I going to be looking out for? Target prioritization. Your aim is probably going to be pretty piss poor. And you are in a level 1 crew, so if you pass out a little bit... That's just how it is, but it's also very low tier. You're probably just grinding out the nation. We have a BF109 A, and this guy will 99% of the time he won't be a threat. Why? Because it's one one of the worst planes in the game, and two, it's only flown by some of the worst players in the game. And I'm so sorry, Super Ninja Dad Zero. That's just how it is because people that are better just don't fly this thing because they know it's terrible. Now you get a crit in, he has a little bit of a leak, he's kind of damaged, and the Heinkel 112 comes in. Now I wouldn't really focus on the BF 9A. Yes, he's behind us, but just kind of worry about the Heinkel 112. Not a great plane, turns all right, can do something. Dodge the head-on, he's too slow to really pull in, that's good. Like what you just did is good. You shoot at long range, you dodge the head on. Be careful at higher tiers, of, especially against planes with good guns and good roll rates. And maybe good turn rates. If you break off this early, look how much time he has to just commit to this head on. Now you pull it into the opposite direction because he's too slow to follow. So good dodge for the BR. Just be careful once you get higher. The 109 comes in. And I don't really care about him, but I do want to kind of close the gap. So I want to kind of go head on with him. Just like you do right here. But now you want to be pulling under him towards the Heinkel 112. We have him directly on a 6. We need to be careful. You start pulling in. Are you going to use your flap? Okay. This is the thing. A lot of people do this wrong. I'm actually going to pause it a little bit this time. You notice... Okay, this guy is missing. He doesn't have lead. But you notice that he is going to pull in, right? So please, for the love of God, just dodge. You just keep flying straight. You're going to give this guy a shot. Now, you can do two things here. You can go down to pick up speed or you go up and out turn them both. Personally, once you get past this nose and this nose, just go straight vertical and these guys will die very easily because of the planes they are in. Now, we pull into his guns. You have your flaps down. This will kill your rate. Now, if you pull them in quickly here to just... Or pull them down quickly to get a shot, completely fair. But... Like this, like dropping a little bit more flaps to get a shot in. That's fine. That's how you can use them. Perfectly reasonable. But in these kind of turns where you're constantly turning, it's actually killing your airspeed. And without airspeed, guess what? You're going to turn worse because you are going to be slower. Dodge the Heinkel 112 again. This 109A is basically dead. You raise the flaps when going vertical. I mean for level 35. Pretty intuitive. But you just stalled yourself out for the next guy. Even though this guy is essentially dead. You notice that this guy is super damaged. You notice that... Or you know that the Heinkel 112 is coming in right here. By the time you are about 1 to 2 seconds. Give it 1, 2, 3. The 112 is about to be firing at you. Maybe it takes a little bit longer. There it is. You start yourself out, you made yourself some of the easiest shot imaginable. He just misses all of his shots because it's low tier. And I know it's low tier, all these players are terrible, yada yada yada. Doesn't really matter. It's about the fundamentals that I'm seeing are completely wrong. Now you kill the guy, which is fine, I guess. And then we turn in front of the Heinkel 112 again. Second one comes in, and you set yourself up for disaster. You just gave two people the shot. Let's look at it once more, shall we? You're pulling out of his guns. This is good. Second guy comes in. You are now out turning both of them at once. You will pass his nose before uh, he pitches up into where your line is. And this guy has no chance of out turning you. So what do we do? We straighten out. Give this guy position. Then we turn back in. Give this guy the shot. Because he's behind us and he's slower. So you give this guy the shot. But you also turn in front of the second guy. I see this very often. Commit to your lines. More often than not, this will win you the fight. Instead of turning into them. You drop your flaps again. Again, this will kill your rate. 
you fast forward a little bit, we go head on. I mean, can't really do anything else here. And at this point, you're just too slow. Now, you hit this guy. He's probably leaking something. You can drop your flaps here to get a shot in. That's fine. Get more hits. Look behind you. There is something coming. The fork is coming. You're just not looking behind you. Go into another head-on. Both of you miss. He crashes. That's fantastic and all. What happened to the other one? Please look. There he is. I mean... I hope it's clear. Flaps again. Don't use your flaps in this maneuver. It only works in a certain amount of planes. This one isn't one of them. The F111 will be one. I'm sorry I'm sick as shit. But... So I might sound a bit uh, shitty right now. So you are just completely out of energy. And that's why this guy starts out turning you. Don't use your flaps too much. In most scenarios you're better off not using your flaps. Opposed to actually using them. Now here you can use them to kind of just float above his nose. But you also want to keep the energy to get above him. I mean it all looks okay. Especially for a level 35. But. Uh, yeah I mean. I think it's clear. I don't want to will on him too much. Because he is a low level. You want to pull into them there. Or did you actually have your. Do you have your fucking instructor on? Or did we get low? You're turning to the right. That might be the instructor pulling you straight. I'm not entirely sure. If it is, turn that off. It's called auto level. And just type in the option menu, instructors. He crashes, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> uh, go to your instructor thing in the option menu and turn it off. Because that's going to get you killed. Main thing here, stop overusing your flaps. And don't turn in front of people. Other than that, for a level 25, pretty decent. Just be just be careful with this shit. You got very, very lucky that you are flying. Or not really lucky because you are at a low BR. But you are lucky that these guys are absolutely terrible. They would have rinsed you if they had a semblance of a brain. Simply because you kept turning in front of them. Sure, they don't have very good guns. And that's something you can argue. But especially this right here. This is something that you see all the time. Now, you are outturning him, and you see that you are outturning him. And then you reverse your turn, even though he's behind you. Stick to your lines, it will do you more good most of the time. Just keep turning into the same direction. You don't want to switch up your turning circle unless you absolutely have to. Say someone is much faster than you in a much more maneuverable plane, and you need to seal the deal quickly. Then you do something like this. But if you are in a low speed dogfight. And he's already on you. Especially with the second guy. You did it wrong two times basically. Because you gave this guy the shot. And this guy the shot. At the same time. So. A little bit more target prioritization. Work on your aim. But that's a bit of a given. Especially at the level. And just stop using your flaps too much. Especially when your plane is already more maneuverable than them. But it doesn't have the most amount of energy. Because this engine isn't particularly strong. Overall. Pretty decent. Then we have F5E versus multiple versus one. Cool. We have an F14 a MiG-21. It's a German one. Might be an SPS. Might be the MiG-21 MF. It might even be a BIS. Let's take a look at it. We have the SPS. That's good. That's a plane that we can actually somewhat dogfight. F14 is going to be rough if he also comes in. And also SU-22. Now, these two planes that we have right here are perfectly dogfightable. As well as the F14. Three of them at the same time, however, is a little bit rough. F-14 seems to be fucking off, which is absolutely fantastic. And we are turning into the SPS. Now, I want to clarify, you want to try to stay as fast as possible. So you can use your high-speed retention that you have in the F-5E at like point Mac 9.5-ish. You can't really do that right now. However, you are in a pretty decent position and you are able to just turn into both of them. And if that SU-22 doesn't fold his wings out and takes a different line, he is not going to be doing much to you. SPS goes head-on with the F5C, absolutely skill issues him. But he did break off for a second and this gives you a lot of position to kind of just turn in behind him. Keep looking around, that's good to see. SU-22 looks to be pulling into you, you want to be careful of that. Personally, I would slowly go down, pick up some speed to get out of his nose and maybe get on the SPS. You don't have to keep rolling and tapping all your stuff. It's just losing your airspeed. It's minor, it's just something I noticed. You will slowly pull into the 6 of the SPS. 
Very good. Plane on your right, I think. Is that a bot? I don't know. I see something on your radar. He will turn in front of you. Will you get the shot? If you miss it, please don't commit. Well, you kind of have to, don't you? Now you're probably dead. Is he gonna be dead? Well, it doesn't really matter because the entire enemy team is coming in. So at this point, you're dead. I mean... At this point, I don't need to commentate on anything because you're just fucking done. There is... <laughs> that's not much to say. Here. That hit you. Yeah, cool. So, say this remained only the 21 and only the SU-22. What you did up until here was quite okay. Not much to say. Could have done something differently, but it worked out because of the planes you were against. So nothing inherently wrong. You are pulling in the 6 of this guy. But you also have the SU-22 on your 6. So right now you need to pull lead on this guy. You can go for the shot. But once you notice that you miss that. I understand that you want to commit to this. But because of his speed bleed and his nose authority. He's probably just going to float over your nose. It's not really worth to stick to this. Because you're just setting yourself up for the SU-22. Best case here. You kill him, obviously. But if you miss this, just keep pulling. This this MiG-21 doesn't have the energy to really contest you right now. In the worst case, if it feels like he's going to go head on or it's a low speed trade or whatever and you don't want to take it, you can just fly away and get your speed back up. That's nothing wrong with breaking off a fight if it means that you survive and take the fight a little bit later. The SU-22 on your ass isn't really that big of a threat. Why? Because it's an SU-22. It's an absolute boat. The SU-17 is a little bit scarier. If it's on your 6 with its wings out and it knows how to use its flaps and its lines. It can kind of energy trap you and it does accelerate quite well. But in this scenario with an SU-22, I'd personally just keep pulling. Because you will eventually pull in front of him. And guess what? I mean, yeah, there's not much you can do about all of that. But in general... Don't overcommit on people. And other than that, this was pretty okay. What could I have done better? We have the P-51 C-10. And we have 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh my lord. Alright. Right off the bat. L. Not much to say here. Running away. Thank you for the timestamp. There's really not much else you could have done there. So it's completely understandable. Dogfight begins. Destroy one. Alright. Mm. Not sure what to say. It's not inherently wrong. But it feels wrong. Depends on the variant. It's a G. And it's a G. So I personally wouldn't just pull in front of these guys. Because there's two of them. And now one of them can air break you. And the other one can loop you. Which is dangerous. You don't want that. If it's 1v1, might have done it. You can try the reverse one. Look at the second one, because he's about to blow your ass. You set yourself up. Yep, there you go. Instantly hit. Go up over, switch targets. No, he doesn't. That's good. Go for the one below you. You can't contest the one that just passed you. Now, the second one is flying away. First one is directly on your ass. We are going to want to pick up some speed. But right now, your game is already over. Just so you know, because you don't have a water tank anymore. Full commit head on, low speed, very sketch, go vertical, set yourself up again, there it is. Alright, you already got yourself killed twice. So I'm just gonna say target prioritization and the opening of the fight. Essentially, I don't need to look at anything else. But I'm gonna look at it until you destroy one of them. Yeah, okay. It's not that long. So now we need to delay and we need to get them on our six. Running away is not really viable anymore. We are too heavily damaged. We, we have engine damage. And he's catching us. Why are you just flying straight? He's outrunning you. He's gaining position. The closer he gets, the harder this becomes. Second guy also here. You're just not moving at all. You're just giving him the kill. I'm, I'm not sure what your thought process is here. And I don't know how this guy doesn't kill you. Now, he finally uh, comes close. Okay, I don't want to be rude. In the slightest. But this is honestly so bad that I don't know what to say. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. That's just... 
you're not reacting to what they are doing at all. It's like you have your own... Oh my fucking god. <laughs> of course you get the one shot. But... You're not reacting to these guys at all. This guy is pulling on your ass. And he just, he just fucks off. Okay, he goes vertical. That's good. I was about to start roasting your enemies as hard as I'm gonna roast you. I... You're running away from him. You're again just running straight away. Not really maneuvering. Not reacting to him. Don't go vertical here. Especially with your web off. Uh, this is basically you killing yourself again. You really like going vertical. And I understand it. Because you try to make them slower. And make them overshoot and whatever. And you get fucked. Alright. I, I don't know how to commentate on this. The opening here is... The issue with this is that they are in a very bad position and you don't want to be in this position anyway. This is just rough. You want to go back them up a little bit more, drag them around more, kind of like go left, right, go down and up, whatever you want to do. Just get these two one and closer close to each other because when they are this far apart by like three, four hundred meters, you can't really do anything because every, anything you do to the first one is going to set you up for the second one and you don't want that. You get them on your 6, fine I guess, and you want to make them overshoot. But again, because they are about 300 meters apart, anything you do to the first one is going to be bait for the second one. You pull out of his guns, which is fine. We go up over his nose, which is fine. This is something in a 1v1, this is okay, because you are going to reverse him, and now you can pull into him. You see the second guy coming in, you're not going that fast. That sentence. As I said the first time I watched it. Going to get the shot. We don't have guns to really one shot him. Well you did one shot him didn't you. But you don't really have guns that will reliably one shot them. So going for a shot like this. Doesn't do you much good. Especially with the second guy coming in. Go up over. You didn't go for the, the other guy. Which is good. Because then you would have set yourself up for the second one. Or the first one rather. Black Hawk. Black Horn or whatever. Pull your flaps in please. Go for him again. Setting yourself up for the first one. Well, we miss everything. That's just a bad aim. That's something that can happen. Still have your flaps down, by the way. How does he not kill you? Come on, bruh. We have this, the first guy again. <laughs> He's below us. Now you just want to run. Like, sure, you're damaged, whatever. That's good. Because now you are in a position where you are about to get skull fucked. Pull your flaps in, by the way. You're just not reacting. Look at this. You're flying perfectly straight. You're not even tapping your ailerons for good measure. You're not doing anything. I get it. This is what you would have done the first time. Pull them closer together. You still have your flaps down by the way. Pull them closer together. And start dogfighting. However by flying straight like that. You get yourself killed like 7 times in a row. Still have your flaps down. Fantastic. Go vertical. I... I honestly have no words. And the fact that this just one shots him is absolutely hilarious. This is the most... <sighs> PS4 player thing ever. Like, get hit 3000 times and then accumulate all those shells that hit you. Put them into your barrel and then shove them into his plane. Sure, your pilot sniped him, but like... I, I don't know how to correct this. It's just inherently... I'm sorry to be rude, but I can't really say it any other way. It's just extremely bad. Just from the opening to setting yourself up, not reacting to anything that's going on. It seems like your FOV is about the size of... Can I make a... Wait, I'll do it like this. Uh, so It looks like your FOV is this box. And nothing more. But you know... You die. It's not It's not because of your engine gets hit here. It's You should have died about... Where is it? Oh, it's in the dogfighting starts, of course. You should have died right here. This clip would have been 3 minute 10. It would have been a lot less painful to watch. But you know, you're trying to learn. I respect it. But the main thing here is... React to whatever they are doing. 
absolute basic tip, but just start with that. Actually look at what your enemy does instead of making a plan in your head and trying to follow it. Trying to follow the plan in your head doesn't really work 90% of the time until you get a very good grasp of the game where you know what the enemy is going to be doing, when you know what kind of planes they are, and you just understand the game so well that you can make a plane based on previous experiences. At this stage of your skill level, don't even worry about it. Just react to what your enemy is doing and don't set yourself up for absolute disaster by setting yourself up constantly for the next guy. But this right here, if someone is within 800 meters, let's say 600 for the average player, please maneuver, even if it's a little bit. Yeah, there's not much else to say here. B25 will carry the match, won't he? Or B17. You actually fucking won. Incredible! Congratulations. <laughs> Alright, mistakes were made. That's a, that's a title I love to see. Why? Because it knows I have something to talk about. 1440p2. Holy shit. Best looking clip of the game. F4U coming in. This Japanese one is the F4U1A. This looks like the 190A1. This is a dogfight that is winnable, but you do want to bring it to a little bit of a lower altitude. Well, let's take a look at what you are going to be doing. Now for the next time, for everyone that does this, uh, press the 2 button up here. It makes uh, me able to see where you were looking in the replay. Small thing, as long as I can see him, not really an issue. Now we pull under his nose, and will we go up? We go up. Don't fly straight too much. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to pause it this early on. But if you are dogfighting someone, keep pulling. Whatever you do, keep pulling. You're not flying a zero. You don't have the luxury of stopping the turn. Keep turning. Get position. That's all. Alright, so don't fly straight here. You're giving him a lot of position. Got to pull in. You pull up over his wings. This is what reacting to your enemy looks like, people. So thank you. For having a clip that actually fits in. Okay, wrong line. You pull in. And you roll down. This right here is a winnable trajectory. It's not the best trajectory. I would... Uh, let's see, will you actually do it? Roll more into him. Right now you're rolling away from him. You're giving him position again. And then you roll down. You notice that you have the position lost already. So now you pull in front of him. Try to get the speed lower without giving him a shot. Now you're giving him a shot here, but you are kind of pulling away from him. He is pulling you in because he's a little bit faster. He's not cutting throttle or anything. And you will eventually reverse him. You should flaps a little bit. Why didn't you shoot? No issue. Keep pulling into him. Right now you have 6 position. You can go up here. You can go down. It doesn't really matter. Use your flaps. You are a 190. This is the rare case where I say use your flaps. Okay. Decent shot. Does he? He's not going to put it out, is he? Oh my fucking god. Alright. Let's take a look at the first part because I'm going to... He is now severely crippled. If you still die to him, well, it's going to be a different issue as what you did right here. The main thing is commit to the fight. You seem to be constantly breaking off. You don't really know where to go. So this is fine for the opening. He's going to pass under you. You can go up here. And if he goes vertical you have position. But he has the energy. So you want to bleed him of his speed. To make sure that you can actually fight him. And win the dogfight. You with flaps down. At low speed. Will completely shit on him. Because you have very good low speed energy generation. Or climb rate or acceleration. Whatever you want to call it. He does not. He is pretty heavy. He does have good flaps. But he runs out of energy. And after he runs out of energy, he is dead in the water. The FU-1A is a fantastic plane. It's not built for dogfighting. Especially planes like the 190. Which are very similar to the Focke Wolf. Uh, sorry, very similar to the Corsair. But not in the dogfight. The Corsair is just worse. The same but worse in the dogfight basically. Good roll rate, good responsiveness. But it doesn't really have that engine power at low speed. Pull straight. Don't do that. Here you just pull in front of him. But you react to where he goes. You go up over his nose. That's all good. 
And here you just give him position again. Stick to your fight. You have enough energy to bleed him. You have enough position to keep turning into him. Now here you try to roll out of his guns. You're trying to stay on his wingtip. Which is good. That's how you want to do it. But here you just turn back into him again. Surprised he doesn't hit you. And you try to stay defensively. The defensive flying here is okay. In terms of maneuvers. He is overshooting slowly. He's not cutting his throttle. Neither I. You probably are considering how little speed you are picking up. But here. You could have killed him already. And from this point on it's okay. It, the main issue here is. Commit to your lines. And you would have been fine. Have more trust in your plane. Have more trust in yourself. He overshoots. Don't deal. Now FOUs are notorious for putting the fires out. And I did kind of get spoiled by the length of this clip. But that's besides the point here. You want to keep pulling in. You want to go vertical. You just want to get this guy as slow as possible. Now will you want to try and... Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Absolutely horrible English. Let's repeat that. You're pulling into him here. Even though... It looks like you're not. If you keep this pull up, or this turn up, you will eventually end up behind him. By doing this, you do the exact same thing as the H-75 did. What is that? Turning back into the guy that is behind you. So, now with proper English, do you want to do that maneuver? The answer is no. And then you pull in front of him, sure you dodge his guns. Because he's heavily damaged and whatever, but it's still something you want to avoid doing. And now you can just kind of keep pulling. As long as you don't reverse your turn. This man dies right here. No question about it. So just keep doing what you're doing. Considering the title. I don't like where this is going. Okay key 44 pops up. Which is fair. In terms of like the reason for why. You want to break off. Or you want to reverse the turn. The issue is key 44 will rinse your ass. Unless you run away from it. You're also just not reacting to it. And we go head on. Okay, you were just looking the other way because of the camera of the replay system. Okay, now it's just kind of L. Because the key 44 had you locked into a dogfight. The FAU. Okay, this is just kind of unlucky. I understand that you say mistakes were made. But in terms of the FAU only, it was okay. You made some mistakes. You turned into the wrong direction. Just commit to your lines. But this guy doesn't die. Which in turn makes it so that you have to focus on two at once. And then the P-38 comes in. I mean there's not really much you can do more anymore here. FU of course. Another one coming in as well probably. Oh he's flying away. But you just completely boxed in. There's nothing you can really do. This is just a massive L. With this guy. Focus more on the guy. Pull more into him. Stop reversing your turns. And you'll eventually get him killed. It's of course a different scenario. If it's a 1v4 or whatever. You need to kill him very quickly. But in this case that wasn't the case. So that is not applicable. If that's correct English as well. This is all okay. Just keep pulling into the same direction. And you'll eventually kill him. And then you can maybe pull it vertical. The issue is when the key 44 comes in. There's also P38. The FAU will probably not catch you anymore. And you just kind of want to go for the key 44. And then... Instead of trying to turn back into all of these guys, just go head on with the P-38. Of course, break off, but at least try to hit him and get separation up. With a little bit of luck, the Corsair goes RTB because he is heavily damaged and he won't be able to catch you. The Key 44 will be outrun because you are diving and maybe you'll pick up the P-38 along the way. And now you are 1v1 versus the Key 44. Of course, best case scenario, but that's the way you have to play this because right now this is basically unwinnable. If you take this fight. The key 44 on its own. Trouble. Key 44 with a P38. Bigger trouble. Key 44 with a P38 as well as a guy that's absolutely hate bonering over killing you. Because you just set him on fire. It probably doesn't get much worse than that. But yeah. That's basically all there is to it. Alright. Last clip of the day. I had to take a little bit of a break. Because I'm completely stuffed. And I'm not talking about my ass. But you can probably hear it. I have a little bit of trouble breathing at the moment. So we have the first guy here. That's probably one of the 1v3. So I'm just going to call this a 2v1 right off the bat. Unless a third guy pops up. Damn epic sound mod. We have our bomb still on. I mean. I wouldn't drop it either. Unless I really have to. FU above us. Now does he see us is the main question. And which FU is it? 
F4, don't tell me it's a 4B. Oh, that's... Oh, this is rough. You're only going 200 miles an hour, which isn't particularly fast to begin with. That's like, what, 360-ish? Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. I don't know. Here, you're pulling behind him, but you can be much closer to him by actually predicting where he's going to be. So I would personally roll my wings like 90 degrees clockwise. So you are going to be pointing more into this direction, where my mouse is right now, where the, the speed indicators are. And you are basically going to be pulling to where he is going to be. Because of your position, that's a smart thing to do. Because the FU4B will run your run you into the ground in the long run. And you don't want that to happen. Now you hear a third guy, or second guy in this case. And you pull away. Now right now, I don't see the FU anymore. I don't like that. I don't see the guy that's coming in either. Now I can tell here that it's an F6F. It's a 5N and he has rockets on. But that's information that you wouldn't have. You either need to look at him, you need to react to him, or you need to commit to the first guy. Right now, and I'll show you exactly why that is, you are on this guy 6, right? You're turning after him and you have position. You're pulling down right now. If you keep pulling into this direction, he will be on your ass in a singular turn. You are reversing yourself versus the F for you. As of right now. We turn. We keep turning. He's off the screen. I don't know what he's doing. I don't like that. He overshoot. Oh my god. The FU is uh, a certified ground RB player. And I'm sorry. But your name is also Balsack. Basically. So I, I can't really take that seriously. Maybe he lost you. I don't know what happened. But he could have been right on your ass. Because you see these lines. He could have been turning into you. He would have already been shooting at you. You would have been dead. F6F overshoots. We now know it's an F6F because you weren't really looking at him. And you turn back into the FU, which is good. You don't want to go vertical there because it sets you up for the F6F. You want to go underneath him. F6F. I don't see the ordinance. I don't know if it's HVARS or Tiny Tims. He overshoots. We can keep pulling into this direction. We will tighten up the loop. And it looks like he is carrying something heavy because he still hasn't pulled in. If this F6F was clean, you would have been dead right here because he would have been shooting at you before you would be shooting at him. Yes, Tiny Tims, we go head on. We do crit him, but we do essentially nothing. That's uh, kind of rough. Are you going to use the terrain to make the FU overshoot or something? Oh my lord, you're already getting shot at. This guy is super close to us. We have no idea where he is. Look around, please. Uh, he doesn't use the terrain. You're just gonna fly straight until you get shot down, aren't you? You're just gonna be bobbing and weaving until eventually your wing falls off. Or your engine, even. Oh, there goes your wing. I see this all the time. This is the exact same thing as that P-51C did. Except you didn't even look at the guy. The F4U is a plane that you wouldn't r outrun... In a thousand years. It doesn't matter how much time you have. It doesn't matter how much speed you have. The f for u will catch you. And you might say. Well I have an F6F. As well as the f for u on my 6. But you don't even know if the f for u is still on you. For all you know. He broke off because you damaged him. Because you crit him. We don't know where he is. Now are we going to look behind? Now he did chase us. But we didn't know that. You didn't react to what they were doing. Now that you didn't kill him here is a little bit unlucky. I do agree. But if he was clean, he would have pulled into you right here. You're better off going a little bit steeper. Keep this trajectory up. And you go up over his nose. Because you don't know if he dropped his ordnance. Because he would have been shooting about here. And that's an F6F. Even with only the 50 gals, he will absolutely stretch you. Now understand it that when you see that he is not pulling in... You want to go for the head-on. That's something that I would have done as well. You don't kill him. Just some... It's not the best aim. But that's not really the issue of a clip here. Aim is not something that I'm going to be mocking too much. Because that's not something you can change in a day. You get the head-on. You crit him. But you don't really know what you crit. And you just kind of never look at him again. Anything that goes on behind you doesn't exist. And now we just dive out to run away against the guy that... 
let me tell you, I don't even know where he is because we haven't looked at him for the last 20 minutes. FAU is pulling after us. He's looping after us. He's looping after us. He's probably slowly gaining. Now we go head on. Second we straighten out. He's basically on a 6. We turn a little bit to the left. And he's basically already shooting at us. Oh, well, he hasn't shot just yet. Maybe he's going a little bit slower than I thought. But there it is. He's like 0.4 on a 6. And by flying straight like this, you're just giving him infinite opportunities. You're not gaining position. You're not outrunning him. You're not, you're not getting anything done other than delaying the inevitable. And delaying the inevitable versus a plane that has almost a thousand rounds of a gun that will blast your wing off with one or two. And I figure he's full of ammo because he was coming out of the, the airfield at the start here. This right here. He basically just came out of the air spawn. So this guy is completely fresh. Fresh ball sack out here. So he's just going to spray you down. And you're not going to get anything done. Yes, it's risky. And you probably try to get back to your teammates. You're probably getting uh, to the AA or maybe even uh, Vicar in his 190. But they're too far away. You're not going to get anything done. You're better off trying to get these guys in a dogfight. At least getting them slow so that the 190 can boom and zoom them. Because right here, this is not a fight that you are probably going to win. I understand that. And you try to get away from him. But by keeping him straight and making him as fast as possible, you're going to make your team's life harder by giving this guy the time to get his speed up, even though he's mid-fight with you. It's not completely terrible. It's also just a fight that's kind of rough. The F6F is annoying to deal with. FU4B is better than you. But it kind of started here. Just pull to where he is going to go. You might be able to get some shots off at like 500 meters. Maybe you'll even hit him. Keep pulling after this guy. You hear someone. Look at the guy. But please keep pulling into the F4U. Why? Because now you're going to get boat on you. And you don't want that. F6F overshoots. This F4U has also no idea what he's doing. Because like. You see his trajectory. He's 550 meters, and you're pulling down. He will just be able to pull straight into you, and they would boat kill you. But he doesn't really have an idea what he's doing himself. And that's why it looked like, and I don't mean to roast you, but pretty well is mostly down to the fact that you survived for a little bit, which is mostly down to these two guys absolutely throwing it. And I don't mean to be rude, but I'm also not going to be sugarcoating it. <laughs> That's really all I have for you today. Thank you all for watching. Feel free to send in more clips through the content review panel. And you'll see me in the next one.